Welcome to the Big Success Show. Today, the Gratefulness Dividend. You're overwhelmed, so much to do. It seems like such a mess. If only you had coaches who could bring you big success. Bring you big success. So lean right in, learn how to win. Entrepreneur Turing. Tips to be your best. With a professor and Mary Lynn for your big success. Now, here's something I, I never thought about before until, until we saw this research that there's this gratefulness dividend that flows to those who fight off abundance denial. Now, that's a big word, abundance denial. We're going to talk about that today. Hi, I'm George Kruger, also known as the professor. And I'm Mary Lynn. And our show today. It's actually inspired by episode number 954, where we talked about the hedonic treadmill. And uh, Professor, will you review with us what that is? Well, the hedonic treadmill, I mean, we can all picture a treadmill. So, so it kind of is this concept that we have these bursts of happiness, be, you know, when we buy things. When we buy things and they're new, we have this uplift in happiness but then we quickly come right back to where we were, and we're sort of on this treadmill. We're just running in place with, in terms of happiness. So once the newness wears off, the happiness wears off, too. It's out the door. And so our research on the hedonic treadmill turned up a book by Greg Easterbrook called The Progress Paradox, How Life Gets Better While People Feel Worse. Now, what oh, does that mean? Well, I'll tell you. <laughs> He's the one, actually, who coined this phrase, abundance denial. And and I think this is, it's a fascinating book because... You know, we have more and more. I mean, we have more than the in the history of mankind. Nobody's ever had as much as we have. Right. And yet there's still so much unhappiness. You know, we feel this sense of we need more, which in some ways that's a good thing, but it can be a bad thing at times. And we're going to talk about exactly that today. Right. How to fight off this abundance denial and to reap the rewards of gratitude. So why don't we start off with what is abundance denial? Well, so abundance denial asserts that we discount how well off we are. You know, you think about this. When you see that, like be a kid, go back to being a kid. When you see that toy you don't have, oh, you just you want it, right? right? I mean, I want this toy. And then we get it and we play with it for a little while. And then, you know, in a short period of time, mm -hmm. it's in the heap. And as adults, we do the exact same thing. Oh, I'd love to have that bigger screen TV, we'll mm -hmm. call it. Then we get it, and pretty soon that bigger screen TV looks about the same as our smaller screen TV, right? So, I mean, the point is we're discounting what we have, and we're always putting a premium on what we don't have. Right. Oh, I've got a great TV, but I don't have the biggest one. Exactly. And so what we're doing here is we're denying ourselves that feeling of abundance. So why is this abundance denial so pervasive? Well, think about this, Mary Lynn. I mean, when you listen to the news... Is it positive news or negative news that gets people to tune in? Yeah, it's negative. It's negative news. The news media knows that. That's why we don't see too many positive stories. Think about advertisers. I mean, our advertisers, do they? how much money is spent by advertisers convincing that what you already have is really good and you don't need to buy more? <laughs> hey, don't, right? don't, I mean, don't upgrade that iPhone. Absolutely exactly. do not. Yeah. The, I mean, the, the fact is advertisers' job is to make us think that this next thing that we don't have is the absolute thing we do need. Mm -hmm. So we end up with this perpetual incoming messages about stuff we don't have that we absolutely have to have. Yeah, you need that in order to make your life complete. <laughs> and then we could go further, another area, the whole social media space. I mean... You know, I'm not going to post a photo of what I look like first thing in the morning. I'll post a photo when I'm all glamoured up, right? <laughs> Thanks to phone filters and see, any other things that I can... Precisely. And the point is, what we see is our friend's perfect life, right? It's the life that we would like to have all the time. That's what we post on Facebook or wherever. You know, it's, it's that perfect life, not the life we actually live, which is 99% of the time not that eventful. 1% of the time it is eventful, and that's what we record on Facebook. Mm. And then and then actually one more. There's one more, and that is just it's human nature. I mean, and this is a good thing. This was this what this is what keeps us evolving. It's human nature to want more. Like I said, that's good because that motivates us, but it also can harm us if we never stop to take time to be thankful. And to stop wanting more. Exactly. <laughs> All right. So how do how I, I guess that leads perfectly into how yes. does 
How does this affect us you know, long term? Well, and it affects us because if we only see the clouds and never the silver linings, life is pretty gray. You know, things are good, but we don't see the good. That's pretty rough. And so we end up in this perpetual state of unhappiness. Happiness never grows. So then how do we make sure that happiness does grow, that we don't get stuck in that perpetual unhappy state? It's very simple. One thing you can do, be more grateful. Be more grateful. Just, be more just in the stop. moment. Be happy with what you have. Exactly. Stop and be more grateful. If 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 uh, if the car has some rust, be happy about that rust. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> That's <laughs> one way to look don't, at it. Don't don't beat yourself like oh, I wish I didn't have a car that had some rust. Right. Just be grateful for the car that you have and the fact that it gets you to where you need to go. Focus on the wheels and the engine. Yeah. There you go. There you go. Or the interior. I don't know. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Anything but the rust. So I guess, uh, you know, so how can you be more grateful? So, you know, that may, don't don't look at the one thing that's wrong. Look at the things that are great. Yes, exactly. And I guess it starts, I think, with just being more mindful. And, and here's something we'll share with, with you, our audience uh, that, that we use to kind of snap us back when we're kind of in a funk. It's just to simply ask this question. If we can't be happy with what God has already given us, how can we expect him to give us more? How mm. can he expect us to bless us more? Mm. And and I think that really helps us get to the right yeah. mindset, right? Yeah. So like just being in the moment and saying, okay, look, I'm, I'm having... Not I'm looking be... past what we have. Exactly. and And also sensing yourself when you're kind of having these negative thoughts that roll into more negative thoughts that roll into more negative thoughts and saying, you know, no, this is not a good way for me to live. There's a dividend for being grateful. I want that. We're going to talk about that. But just to really be in the moment and stop yourself and say, okay, I need to, I need to be aware of what is a blessing in my life. And the second thing then is to borrow a quote from Nike, just do it. Just be grateful, you know, and especially when you feel yourself in that downward spiral, you know, you're floating from one negative thought to another more negative thought to yet another more negative thought. Just do it. Just stop, pause and be grateful for right. a minute. And, you know, I've, I, some people will do um, tally things that they're grateful for at night before they go to bed. Yes, you know, exactly. Five things that you're grateful for. Yes. Um, the, something like that. Just always making sure to keep what you're grateful for top of mind. Absolutely. And so number three is to make it a habit. You know, whether mm -hmm. whether you do this before, before you go to bed, when you get up, at lunchtime, it doesn't matter. Just make it a habit to every day spend a little time being grateful. Mm -hmm. The fourth, Mary Lynn, you just alluded to this. Yeah. Write it down. Make a list. Mm -hmm. So we'll say, well, since we're coming into the season, we'll say make it list. Make a list. This will be easy to remember because mm -hmm. the next one's going to be check it twice. <laughs> okay. So make a list. List the things you ha you ha have to be happy about. Live the th list the things that you're grateful for, and then our fifth point is to check it twice, meaning review it regularly. Review those things that you're happy about, or that you that that make you happy, that that bring fulfillment and joy and love and abundance into your life. Write these things down and then review them regularly, and you're gonna find it's really hard not to be grateful and feel a sense of abundance exactly. when you do these things. Exactly. And this does make a difference. Not Absolutely. only not only can you sense the difference that it makes right now just listening and just thinking in your own minds about things that you're grateful for, but uh, it's science and research shows that this makes a difference. Absolutely. Robert Emmons, who is considered the guru, the gratefulness guru, I guess we could call him, he wrote this wonderful book called How the New Science of Gratitude Can Make You Happier. And one of the things his studies show, and I find this just fascinating, they show that there is a gratefulness dividend, that people who make a habit of giving thanks are more likely to reach their big goals. And that's so important for us to remember that by giving thanks for what we already have, by what we've already achieved, by where we are, and even realizing that, yeah, there's obstacles. It's been tough to get here. It's, it's going to be tough going forward, but I'm so happy to be right where I'm at. I'm grateful for it. I'm grateful for all that I've accomplished. That pays big dividends. That is going to allow you to reach your goals, bigger goals, and even faster. That's big success. And that brings us to today's Big Takeaway. Gratefulness brings greatness. Oh, I like that play on words there. That's good. That's good. And gratefulness is a part of abundant thinking. 
to help you with that, we created a free kit. It's called the Big Success Abundant Living System, Five Steps to Living Abundantly. It's a great little kit that's packed with a whole lot of punch. Uh, you get an ebook, audiobook, affirmations, cheat sheets, checklists. So check it out on our website, Big Success. That's big with 2 gsuccesscom and get your free kit today. And to our listeners here in the United States, happy Thanksgiving. <laughs> hope, you, hope you enjoy your turkey. Yes, lots <laughs> of it. We're grateful for you for subscribing to our podcast. Until next time, here's, here's to your, your big success. success. Here's to be your best. With the professor and Mary Lynn for your big success. Find big success at biggsuccess.com.